Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to a few out there. It is the Earthmaster back on the live stream on this beautiful Saturday. It is the weekend. Get out there and enjoy it. Uh, June 17, 2023, about 11.33 a.m. here along the West Coast. We did see some activity ramping up in Tonga overnight. Also, the Japan area once again. The latest quake, though, shows a 1.4 over here into the Mediterranean area. Now, looking at the activity last night, we did kick up another six-pointer here into the Tonga Ridge area, about 35 kilometers deep. We've been watching this region here bounce back and forth between deeper activity into the subduction zone and then shallower earthquake activity downstream or uh, upstream, so to speak. So when you go right here, uh, or at least right on your screen, that's the shallower movement. This is the plate boundary, the oceanic uh, floor here. Of course, the subduction zone goes well underneath this piece of land, uh, and we can get some extremely deep earthquakes in that area. Now, we did see a seven-pointer kick up, 7.2. That was pretty deep, 167 kilometers deep. Uh, seems as though it's definitely stressed this area up here around the Tonga Ridge with a good swarm of shallow earthquake activity. <clears throat> now, the deeper movement quakes, of course, will add further strain and stress that's how you get the stress building up here along any major subduction zone right it's not your typical slip strike fault this is uh two areas the oceanic crust here uh, subducting underneath the region uh to the left you can see the pacific plate here this is uh the general area there should be two arrows right here as well pointing towards each other but those are the subduction zones on the map so the tonga area uh, easily has 240 mm per year in accumulated slip rate. So this area does see quite a bit of movement as the uh, Pacific Plate, this area subducts here underneath the Australia Plate, this segment. So a lot going on here, uh, deeper movement quakes. I think something uh, possibly bigger could be brewing up along this plate boundary that also includes New Zealand down here to the south. Uh, they did see, um, at least in the Kermadec Islands area, I did see some swarming in the weeks past. Mostly shallower earthquake activity with quite a few fives kicking off. Uh, but we'll still continue to watch this region as I believe we may see something larger pop up here soon across this area of the Tonga region or along this plate boundary. Again, that includes areas around New Zealand. So last night, 6.0 coming in again um, into the Tonga region, 35 kilometers deep. That was about 4 o'clock in the morning. Since then, we've seen a uh, quite a few more fours, and I'm sure some smaller quakes in there as well. Uh, looks like New Zealand did see a 4.4 down here along the plate boundary, but this this area definitely needs to catch up, and more than a 4.4 in the magnitude department is going to uh, make that happen. Probably something above, easily a six-pointer out there across this region of the plate boundary. Uh, let's go ahead and check out New Zealand real quick with the GeoNet servers. They are the folks monitoring and um, keeping up on the earthquake activity. So it looks like they're reporting a 4.2 South Island area, 4.4. I'm not for sure where that's coming from. Uh, let me double check and see. EMSC models here will get their information from, well, it says GeoNet, uh, but GeoNet here is reporting it as a 4.2. So maybe a little bit of adjustment since then. Uh, either way, it looks like it was felt uh, there in the South Island area, uh, 45 kilometers southwest of Haast area. Looks like that's right on the Alpine Fault specifically as well, which would be the plate boundary. And this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, this area of the Alpine Fault definitely overdue for a lo uh, larger earthquake, uh, as well as the Hikirangi subduction zone. Uncertain, though, on if that's going to pop. Uh, but you never know. Definitely uh, need to be on guard out there across New Zealand. Uh, so, yeah, mostly weak to light shaking reported across areas of South Island. Uh, we can look at the earthquake drums here and probably see that prominent signature right there. There we go. About two hours ago. Uh, that's all the seismograph stations there. Of course, as you go further south or further down on this page you get closer to the south island stations and of course that's where it's going to be uh very prominent looking right that's a nice signature of an earthquake looks like potentially this station right here around jackson bay could be the uh, epicenter area 
Again, that's a 4.2. Prior to that, some smaller earthquake activity here around this region of the uh, Jackson Bay area. We'll continue to watch this uh, area along the plate boundary for some further movement. Another area that's seen some active regional activity here is uh, across Japan. We're getting a, a really good swarm of activity here uh, across the Japan Trench and even the Kurokamachaka Trench up here showing some further movement. This here is another subduction zone. Uh, now, I don't think we have enough stress here to see a you know similar event like we've seen in 2011 with the nine-pointer. Uh, those don't occur you know, every 10 years. They, they occur much longer intervals. Uh, but there is an area up here along the Kurokamachaka Trench that is, that is overdue uh, for some larger scale activity. I'm talking uh, above a 7 in this area. So we'll continue to watch this. Of course, this is a major subduction zone and they do uh, get some big ones out here. But again, I don't think we're going to see a 9-pointer. We may see another 6 or 7 in this area with all this deeper movement quake activity uh, triggering into the Japan Trench. The latest quake of 4.3, 221 kilometers into the subduction zone area. Um, that was actually about 6 o'clock. The latest one, though, upstream. But you, as you can see, deeper movement quakes here kind of triggering uh, some shallower earthquake activity uh, up towards the uh, plate boundary here this, uh, of the uh, Japan Trench. Kurokamchaka Trench overnight. Uh, we did see that super deep 5.7, 417 kilometers deep. Now, we did see a little bit of movement uh, yesterday afternoon at the surface levels. Uh, for a 4.8 with this deeper movement overnight, somewhat larger than the surface activity. We'll continue to watch this for some uh, further development upstream around the uh, subduction zone interface here where it starts to develop, where the uh, most of the strain accumulates here in this region. Uh, over here around the Philippines, a little bit of activity overnight as well. 5.5, the latest, 34 kilometers deep. Um, see what else we have on the earthquake 3D globe. Getting a little clutter here again around the Indonesia area. Some fours and twos kicking off. Also 3.1 off the coast of Sumatra. It's going to be this area right here. Nothing showing up on the USGS map. Uh, a little series of swarming activity up here across the um, China area north of the Himalayas around there. It looks like. Um, Latest, a 4.3, about 14 kilometers deep here into this region of China. This area definitely has seen some uh, elevated activity here recently. Further to the west, around the Mediterranean regions, a lot of this activity, uh, older movement, but we did see some activity, looks like, uh, across eastern Turkey here with a 4.5 early this morning. But that's actually in Iran. Far, uh, right around the border area, it looks like. 10 kilometers deep. Uh, earlier this morning, had a super deep earthquake up here in Romania. 120 kilometers deep into the uh, underneath this mountain range here. Now, it looks like there may be some type of uh, uh, subduction type area in that region. But away from the plate boundary, this is only going to show the major plate boundaries here. Uh, uh, of the globe, of the world. Also a little bit of activity, it looks like, around the Morocco region. A couple twos. 3.9 up in France from last night. I don't think we've had any further activity kicking up, though. A little shaking going on. A little rare earthquake activity, but definitely looks like something may be brewing broadly across this area with the deeper movement quakes. Continue to watch for some further large-scale area or large-scale large activity in that area. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out in the divergent boundaries. South America region, um, some older activity from yesterday. And a handful of newer quakes there in the white circle. Some threes there into the Chile area. Looks like, uh, I think that 5.3 is from last night here into the Panama region. Yeah, last night, just off the coast of Panama. Uh, looks like we did see a little... Further aftershock activity, a 3.1 following that movement. Uh, up here into the States, let's go ahead and see what we have going on on the USGS map. Low activity, it looks like, around Yellowstone. 2.8 coming in near Kelly, Wyoming. 
six kilometers deep. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone seismograph stations here and see what we have. Uh, 2.8 just coming in, so I don't think we're going to see it uh, on the uh, seismographs yet, at least not on these recorded ones. Let's see here. Just looking for uh, any earthquake activity that may be local. Looks like we had a little bit of small microquake activity uh, a couple hours ago. Some of that movement did show up across, well, not too many stations out here, but it does look like a little bit of smaller earthquake activity around Norris Junction on the outside northern edge here of the Yellowstone caldera. Uh, but that 2.8, that's a, a ways out of there south of the uh, general Yellowstone area into the Pacific Northwest relatively quiet Northern California as well one earthquake uh, this morning it looks like a 3.0 back building here prior to the Cascadia mega thrust area this is another subduction zone that could be overdue in terms of uh, large-scale 9.0 earthquake activity last one was back in 1700 uh, regular intervals be, uh, run between, oh, they say 260 to 400 years or so. Uh, and that's just for the full rupture, the complete segment here that runs up uh, past Vancouver Island range here. Uh, but we can see some partial ruptures here, southern end, northern California, of magnitude up to about 8.4. Uh, and that's been a little while. We've had a nine-pointer um, back in 1700, 323 years ago. So who knows? Maybe we'll see a partial rupture. Uh, but it doesn't happen always that way. Um, it just uh, occasionally a partial rupture gets in there and then it builds up some strain for a nine-pointer. Uh, but it's it's not common. Uh, not you know, There's no typical regular intervals of eights that occur uh, compared to the full rupture, which is uh, a nine-pointer or greater which is, uh, again, 323 years ago. It's building, that's for sure. Uh, the San Andreas Fault, you know, I think the whole west, west Coast area is overdue, right? We've been pretty lucky out here in California in recent terms. Uh, Ridgecrest area, yeah, that's kind of a, you know, that was a somewhat of a larger quake, the series of quakes back on July 4th, July 5th, 2019, I believe it was. Uh, but that's a ways away from the plate boundary. These plate boundary earthquakes can be larger. And it's been a while since we've seen any major earthquake activity. We're overdue on several segments here of the San Andreas Fault. So you throw that in with the West Coast, uh, nor Pacific Northwest Cascadia subduction zone being overdue. Yeah, it's just it's like almost like a ticking time bomb out here. Uh, okay, across the Caribbean plate here, aside from movement around Puerto Rico, mostly twos and threes, it looks like. Big Island of Hawaii. A little scattered activity stretching out here across the Loihi Seamount uh, earlier this morning, a 2.0 and a 3.1. A little odd movement. Very shallow earthquake activity. Don't see too much movement kicking off out here, but... Um, yeah, it's a little a little odd. I have to keep an eye on that, see what may be brewing. All right, space weather activity. As we look at the solarham.net site, well, no more ex unexpected uh, solar storms coming in yet. Looks like uh, we did have a uh, little activity yesterday with a M flare. Low-level M flares kicking off. That was yesterday right here. Today, a little bit different story, although we're still kind of crackling here with some sea flare activity. See what we got uh, for the sunspot regions here. The latest imagery is going to be over here, but here's a couple newer sunspots that we were watching. Let's see if we got a better view today. Slightly better, but not impressive, though. I was hoping for something a little bit more drastic looking in terms of um, unstable sunspot areas, but... We still got uh, a couple sunspots that are currently facing Earth that could pose some hazards for um, flaring. This one right here directly facing us and also this large sunspot region looks fairly complex with a couple different regions in there that may, may, that may throw off an M flare or two. 
Uh, but we'll continue to watch these on the eastern limb for uh, any further strengthening. Green across the board means low level activity here over the next few nights far as the auroras go. Storm Prediction Center, see what we got. Goodness, kind of changed a little bit from last night. Uh, a little enhanced risk for some severe weather. Looks like they added a 5% chance for tornado probability as well across Oklahoma and um, portions of southern Kansas. The main threat today is definitely going to be some large hail and some wind events out there. Some straight line winds that could create some damage as well in that hatch zone. About 30% chance for both the hail and the uh, wind threat. So if you're out there off work today, make sure you keep your car underneath that awning or in the garage. Definitely could be a, a bad day for some hail. Any thunderstorms that do pop up out there will produce uh, some hail and uh, could be rather large. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here and enjoy my day. Um, Supposed to be about 95 today, a little bit cooler tomorrow as we got a uh, pretty significant low pressure system coming in, bringing with it uh, some cooler air. Let me uh, bring up the regions here, show you guys what I'm chatting about. Right now, we're still cooking out here along the west coast, but uh, tomorrow we got this low pressure system dropping straight out of the north strengthening trough that's going to bring uh, with it some very cool unseasonably cool temperatures out here along the west coast pacific northwest as well maybe some showers i don't expect much down here in california but you never know with this cold air sometimes we can get some thunderstorms popping up but uh, either way it looks like monday and tuesday and the majority of next week here is going to be nice and cool and pleasant I don't see any major heat spells building up. Well, there we go. Looks like maybe the first week of July, things are going to start cooking out here in the uh, California region. But uh, we'll see if that changes. Either way, looks promising here for next week for cooler weather. If you're out here along the West Coast like I am, uh, I enjoy the cooler weather. I don't mind the heat once in a while, but I'm t I, I don't want to see hundreds months at a time. And it's been that way a lot i lived out here the majority of my life and every summer seems like around may we start getting into the hundreds and we've been pretty fortunate not to have a whole lot of hundreds this year i'm hoping they stay at bay or at least stay somewhere else <laughs> let it cook uh, i don't know where but not here all right folks have a good day stay safe out there we will chat at you guys a little bit later on this evening enjoy your saturday